Hey, what's up guys? I got a brand new video for you today and today we're gonna look at something a little bit different. The people over at Poor Keys hit me up and asked me if I wanted to review their wireless HDMI transmitter as well as their new HH7 monitor which integrates with the wireless transmitter so you can have a wireless monitor. I'll go through all the specs, I'll talk about everything and I'll share my experience with you. But first let's get into the monitor. I currently have the monitor in my hand and you can see me on the display because I'm actually transmitting HDMI off the camera to this monitor so I can see myself. And I also currently have the wireless HDMI receiver on this side of it. But getting to the specs, it's a seven inch monitor. It's an IPS panel, it's 1080p, and it's 1200 nits. It's really bright and it's awesome because if you're outside shooting in the sun, you have no problem seeing the back of the screen. And it actually comes with some screen protectors and I tried putting one of them on. It's a matte screen protector, so that would also help with glare and stuff like that outside. But as you know, Putting screen protectors on is not the easiest thing and I messed it up. So no screen protector on here right now because I, I wrecked that one. It's really thin, it's only 20 millimeters thick and it's 300 grams. Now I actually normally use only five inch monitors on gimbals and cameras and stuff like that because I always found that seven inch monitors were too big. But this one has pretty small bezels and I used it on a C200 quite a bit and it's actually not that bad because it's really not that much heavier than a five inch monitor. But where I think this monitor is best used as a seven inch monitor is probably used for like a focus puller or someone like off camera, uh, on set behind the camera. And it's just a nice size for that. It's made out of this soft touch plastic, similar to like something like the small HD Focus, which is pretty nice. It doesn't feel cheap, it feels really well made. And it also has quarter 20 mounting threads on every side of the monitor, so top, bottom, and both sides. And something that probably sets this monitor apart from other monitors is that it has contacts on it so that you can connect up this wireless receiver and then the monitor can actually feed power to the receiver as well as the HDMI, but we'll talk about that in a bit. On the back, it takes your standard Sony NP batteries. It can take two, but you only need one to power it, so basically just two would give you twice the battery life. On the bottom here, we have HDMI in, HDMI out, headphone jack, and it also comes with its own proprietary cable, which is a P-tap, and it actually comes with the cable for that so you can run it off like a V-mount battery. And it also has a USB port for importing LUTs, and updating the firmware. But uh, yeah, let's get into importing LUTs and the firmware. Included in the box is a USB drive with LUTs on it, and we're gonna use this to update the firmware. So I'm gonna copy the firmware right to the root of the drive and then plug it into the USB port on the monitor. Then we're gonna turn the monitor on and go to the menu and down to firmware, then select update USB. And this will take about one minute. And once it's done updating, it'll restart itself and you're good to go. So taking a look at the top of the monitor, the left hand side is your power switch along with four custom buttons. The first custom button is the audio meters, the second custom button is focus peaking, the third custom button is false color, and the fourth is your histogram, which you can reprogram to whatever you want. Now going into the menu on the right hand side here, we can go in and adjust guides, crosshairs, different masks and things like that, just so you can help you with framing your shots. Then we can go down and actually adjust the brightness, contrast, sharpness, tint, and backlight of the monitor. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be on high because it's so bright, but you can set that to medium. Uh, some monitors will flip automatically when you flip them upside down, but in this you have to go into the menu and flip the entire display around if you want to shoot with the monitor upside down. Now one of the more awesome things that comes with this monitor is the ability to load LUTs, and they come pre-loaded on the USB included. You can add your own to it if you want to, but in here you can see there's a whole bunch of different LUTs that they've come pre-loaded. I'm using S-Log right now, so I'm just going to load up an S-Log LUT and show you how that works. Uh, you select the LUT and you can see it loads here. Once I restart the monitor, you'll see that the LUT is loaded in and then we can toggle that on and off when we go back to the LUT configuration and you go to stored from USB and you can toggle that on and off. All right, enough about the monitor and its features and stuff like that. It's pretty standard for all the monitors that are coming out right now, besides the fact that it's 1200 nits and has a special contacts on the back for the wireless HDMI receiver. All right, so let's talk about the Claymore wireless HDMI transmitter. It actually comes in a really nice Pelican case like this. It comes with a bunch of cables. It comes with SDI cables, HDMI cables, USB cables and stuff like that, and as well as P-TAP cables because you can actually power the transmitter side to a V-mount battery if you had like a setup on a RED or any camera system that runs off V-mount. But I'm currently just powering it off a standard Canon LPE6 battery, which you can pretty much get anywhere. The transmitter side has SDI in, SDI out, as well as HDMI in and HDMI out. It only transmits up to 1080p 60 FPS, but it does that uncompressed. And they're saying the range is up to 30 meters. Now the receiver, which is on the monitor right now on this side, actually has contacts, like I said, plugged into the monitor and it's powering it and sending video transmission to the monitor that way. But you can also take it off and power it with USB 
and an HDMI output to any monitor. Now to sync, basically I just turned both of them on and they automatically sync. They connect pretty quick, probably with under 15 to 20 seconds, and then you're up and running. So I kind of want to talk about my experience with this. I was mainly just using it in the office here, using this as like a reference monitor so I could see if I was in focus and stuff like that. And I ended up using it on a music video shoot. I was kind of hesitant at first because it was sort of, there was a lot of people involved and I wanted to make sure that I knew what I was doing and I've never used this before so I didn't really know what to expect. And so I had the wireless receiver side on the monitor. I found that when I got within like 15 to 20 feet away from it and like somebody walked in front of it or somebody was in the way, it would actually lose signal. So you cannot get up to 30 meters if something's in the way, it has to have no obstructions. And even then, the further away you get, I find that it's not really that great. So what I did end up doing was taking this receiver end off, mounting it to a C-stand way up in the air, about eight feet up in the air, powering it off a USB brick, as well as running the HDMI out down to the monitor. And at that point, I had no cutouts, it was running smooth. Um, I was all around the warehouse, we were shooting like dance scenes and stuff like that. People were in the way, and uh, the director was using this as a reference monitor to see what was going on. and. Yeah, I think it worked out really well. I didn't have too many problems. One thing I'm really surprised with is the latency. There's hardly any latency with this monitor. It's pretty much exactly what you see is what you get off the camera. So that would make this monitor and wireless system ideal for a focus puller because you need to have zero latency when you're pulling focus. Now, all that said, it's not perfect. Like I said, it does cut out. It can cut out. It doesn't have the longest range ever, but we also got to look at the price point. This thing is not up to the price of like Teradek and stuff that can go up to you know, 100 meters or whatever. So this is more for like indie filmmakers, indie music video guys, documentaries and stuff like that, where you're not really needing high budget stuff, but you need a reference monitor. And I would not recommend using this to record off camera. Even though it is uncompressed 1080p, I just wouldn't trust it if it did cut out. But uh, yeah, it is good for a reference monitor that's off camera somewhere else, like for a director or a focus puller. All in all, it's pretty good for the price. My only suggestion would be to maybe put like a bigger antenna on the receiver side or the transmitter side, whichever side needs the better connection. And I think it would be a really good system. Like I said, there's hardly any latency and that's tough to get sometimes in a wireless transmission system. And uh, yeah, if you wanna get anything in this video, I'll put links in the description. I think this monitor is around 289 or under $300, which is crazy. And if you need something and you're shooting out in the sun, a lot of these other cheaper monitors, even some of the expensive ones don't have the type of nits that this has. And uh, yeah, the links will be in the description. I can't remember, prices fluctuate all the time if they're sales. But yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know when the videos go live because some of you don't know. But uh, yeah, see you in the next one.